So I shall hand the floor over to Louise. Any questions that you've got for along the way, please feel free to put in the comments and I will answer and direct them as best I can. So over to you, Louise. Thanks, Gail. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, this episode where I'm going to show you how to make um, face masks. At the minute, we still have to wear these. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make this particular design. Um, there are other designs, um, such as the square face mask. And also there is this one, which you can make um, if you don't have a pattern, um, you can actually hand stitch this. You can use, use a dinner plate to make this pattern. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate how to do these tonight. If you do want to see how to make those, um, you can go over to my page, which is Hey Workshops, and there's a video on there, which is the same video in which we'll make these. The reason I've chosen to show you how to make these, the feedback, um, when I originally made the video to show people how to make these, um, people then asked me to make them for them. And the feedback that I've had is these are the best and most comfortable masks that they've worn. They're reusable, so you can wash them at 60 degrees, which is what the recommendation is for it. So when I actually decided to do the piece of research on this, it was back when the lockdown first started back in um, March. And what I, the things that I'd seen about what people were doing and what they were actually making, there was so many, um, so much rubbish floating around. Mm -hmm. I actually went and spent two days just researching about um, the truth behind the masks. This was before it was compulsory to wear them. Were they actually worth wearing? If we made them, what did they make, need to be made out of? And I looked at the American legislation of the CDC. I looked at the World Health Organization and all the things that were, they were saying back then are what um, brought, why the government brought them in for them. Now, these are not a medical mask. These are classed as a face covering. A medical mask, which is an N95, is what you would use if you were treating or working with people with COVID. These are to prevent the spread. They don't prevent it from spreading to you. But if we all stop spreading it, then we can't spread it to anyone else. So a little bit of information about these masks. Um, I'll show you how to make them. I'll show you how to put them on. But first of all, I'm gonna tell you about the fabrics if you want to make these. Um, the best fabric, and this can give you up to 80% protection according to the research, is to use a good quality, what they call quilting cotton. Um, you can get those from, if you are in um, anywhere in the north, you can go to Boys or Hobbycraft and ask for a quilting co quality cotton. That's a bit of a mouthful if you try saying that. <laughs> And, and they, they, will, they will actually tell you, they'll take you to it and say, this is what you need. You can use a poly cotton um, if you want to, because these are triple layered masks that I'm going to show you how to make, which gives you the best um, efficacy when it comes to face coverings. So what I use is I use, um, I use a good quality cotton. Um, so you're looking at around about £10 a metre for a really good quality cotton. But um, for a face mask, if you're just going to make one of these, you can probably get away with a fat quarter or half a metre will probably make three or four of these um, if you're using the same fabric. So this is a really nice, good quality cotton. Pick your own design. I know it's not for everyone's taste. Um, you can go as crazy as you want or you can be nice and subtle. This is actually a poly cotton, and this is fine as well if you're using a cotton, the uh, woven interlayer and this as a poly cotton, it will be fine. Um, and it makes the mask lighter because I had to balance how heavy the mask was for how efficient it was to how wearable it was as well. And I could have used a really heavy duty cotton, a heavy duty interfacing, but it just made it so uncomfortable and unable to wear it. And you can't actually breathe through it. These masks don't have a nose wire in. There's no need to because it actually fits over the face. Um, so you don't need the nose wire. Just a tip for all of you that's struggling with glasses and masks. What you need to do is put the mask over your nose right. and then put your glasses so it presses the mask into your face. 
and then that way the the warm air from your mouth is forced out either at the side or underneath and not up underneath your glasses and steams them up ah, that's that a good tip need. yeah I was going to say that's a good tip with a glasses wearer so <laughs> yeah thanks and, for that. and I'm saying myself but, and it's a nightmare <laughs> when you're trying to see things um so that works really well so what I normally do is I use um, a nice bright print on the outside and I'll use um, something like a poly cotton on this. This is a gingham uh, and this is two, 290 nanometer from boys. So you, there's no problem that you can get plenty of it. So you will need, um, you can usually buy the fat quarters or half meters. So you'll need a couple of fat quarters or half a meter if you're using the same one. You'll need some what is called interfacing. Now, this is a woven, uh, it's not a woven fabric, it's a fibre, so it's just fibres that are compressed, so it gives a different kind of filtration to the mask when I can actually get it apart. Okay, so you can see I've used a lightweight. Don't go and get a medium or heavyweight because your mask will be so stiff and unusable. Um, this is an iron-on interfacing, or you can use a sew-on, it doesn't matter. If you have the iron on face in, one side will feel smooth and the other side, I don't really know if you can pick that up as feels bumpy yeah, and then little, you can see that. They're tiny little bits of glue. So when you iron this on, <laughs> wrong side, so you put the bubbly side to the wrong side of the fabric and press. Okay, don't iron it because it will melt. Louise, if you are not Adrian, oh, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Um, we've had our first question from Adrian Baxter. He's asked, what is gingham? <laughs> gingham. Um, gingham. So if you see that this, this is gingham, it's a check fabric, so you can get it in all sorts of different colours. And all, the, sorry about that. It's like technical nature. So you can see it's in lots <laughs> of different colours. And what it basically means, it's a poly cotton or cotton, and it's woven with a check and it's in two colours. And one colour is always white. Um, and That's if good. you, and you can get different size, um, checks in it. So all of the school uniforms that you see, um, they're made out of a gingham material. It's a really hard wearing um, light fabric that's particularly nice for uh, school uniforms because it washes and washes and washes. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's hard wearing and light. It's quite traditional as well, isn't it, gingham? It's a good traditional pattern. It is. It's, um, that's why the, particularly if you see it in school uniforms. Also, um, it's very much associated with um, the, the country in Western scene. Ah. Um, there you go, Adrian. Yeehaw. <laughs> there you go. Right, thank you. That's answered so Adrian's question. a thank secret you. cowboy. He's a secret <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I just use the gingham because it's very economical. And the other thing as well, this is the side I'm wearing next to my skin. It's really soft. And when you wash it, it goes even softer. And when you've got to wear a mask for a long time, be aware of a fabric that might feel nice to touch for five minutes when it's next to your skin. It can, a particular on your face, which is very sensitive, it can be a real irritant. Mm -hmm. So my eye would definitely, even on this one here, I've got um, a green gingham. I've just found it really is a nice quality mm. fabric to use. But this is a poly cotton as well, which can be worn next to the skin as well. Um, so you need the, the three different types of fabric. And then you'll need your pattern. Now the pattern, um, you can go to my Facebook page. The post is pinned to the top of the page and it's called Math Smith's Myth Busting. And if you go through the comments, there's actually a link there to it. But I will also, she says, trying to look for the pattern, I'd all set up nicely. Mm -hmm. I will also get that. If you want the link, um, we can arrange it so you can email me and I'll send that link to you as well. It's a free download and it's really easy to download. And there's three different sizes. There's adults, there's teenagers, and there's um, young children so from 7 to 11 11 to 16 and then adults so there's a few different sizes i find that the medium one tends to fit most people 
I only normally make a large one if it's for someone who's got a, a really large beard and it needs to go underneath. Um, I find the medium one myself fits nicely on my face as well. So once you've done that, you're going to cut out your pieces with the pattern. You just move everything out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Now, the, this is the pattern. It's a really simple, straightforward pattern. Although this is 7 to 13, this is actually quite a large version of it. Louise, if you just hold that a little bit closer, we can't see. Uh, there we go. Yeah, we can That's see it. Anyway, because I'm, yep. I'm on my phone. We can see um, 7 so, to 13, yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, the what you need to do is cut this in pairs. Um, now, it's really important because you need the two right sides to be opposite. So what you will do, you'll take your fabric and fold it. This is the right side of the fabric. And what you will see as well in the fabric, this is a selvage edge. Now, this is where the fabric sat on the loom. You don't use this fabric because it will, when it washes, it shrinks differently. And that's the other thing before you do any of this, your cotton and poly cotton, not the interfacing, the poly and co poly cotton and cotton, you must wash first because fabric shrinks between 10 and 15% when you wash it. So if you don't, um, you're going to end up with a very small mask or you've got two different fabrics that will shrink differently and it'll be wrinkled and horrible. Wash your fabric first, allow it to dry. Um, I would say be careful about using fabric conditioner because it's going to be against your face and it can be an irritant. And again, think of the washing powder, use a non-bio because I used a, a different, in one of my masks I washed it, my own personal mask that I made for me, I washed it in a different uh, washing powder and my whole face puffed up, puffed up like that. And it was just as I was going away um, for a week and I couldn't see out my eyes. And I was anti on antihistamines for two weeks. So be very oh, wow. careful. Just think of those things. Now, the thing is with the pattern, this, you'll have a grain line and that's where this comes back, your, your selvage edge. So you need to make sure the mask, think, check the pattern. This is, a, this is a pattern that you can use anyway, but if it's a one-way pattern, you need to think about it. Otherwise your pattern might be upside down on your mask. So all of these things, think about it when you do it. So I've got my selvage edge folded against each other here, and I'm going to use the bottom edge of this to line up. Can you see there? Mm -hmm. The selvage edge. Yeah, that's great. Okay. And that's my selvage there. I'm not going to cut into that. Always, always pin before you cut. Okay. And when you pin, pin from the inside to the out to the edge because what that does if you pin going along ouch, you pin going along like this what you can see you've got a bump in the fabric and when you cut that you'll get a jagged edge and you want the edge to be as smooth as possible because it makes life much easier so take the pin from the inside of the pattern to the outside and pin all along always pin along curves because when you cut they'll move if you don't pin them uh, pin up to the point of the curve now to take your time when you're doing this i will do it a little bit faster and also i've now made around about 300 of these <laughs> so I'm used to making them. Okay. So you can see now my fabric is flat. I've got it pinned. So when it, whichever edge I cut, it's going to be flat and smooth. Now I tend to use quite large scissors. You don't have to use these. That you don't have to use huge dress making scissors if you don't want to. But use a sharp pair of scissors, and you cut with the middle of the scissor. OK, so the fabric will go through there. Don't cut all the way down because it moves the fabric. Mm. So keeping your scissors flat, working with the middle of the blade, cut right up to the edge of the pattern. Now, 
Now you can move around your fabric, obviously um, being in front of my camera, I can't do that. Take your time when doing this. Honestly, it's worth it because having a nice smooth cut edge makes the sewing part so much easier. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, And then just cut around and take your time. Okay. Now, remember I had the, the right side of the fabric folded together because I'm cutting a pair. So they have to be opposites because of the shape. Okay. Yeah. Now, take your pins out. So you can see I've got two opposites. That's absolutely crucial. So you cut one pair. Um, if you're doing it all in the same fabric, you can. Um, you need to cut a total of four, but you'd have two pairs. Okay, then I'm just going to show you the interfacing as well. Now, again, with this, you need to have the right sides together. I've got small pieces cut, so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. So just check, if you're not sure and you can't see, it should be the two smooth sides together. Okay. And again, we get to do the same process. Now I talked about the grain in this fabric. Um, with interfacing, there's no grain. So you can cut it however you want. Just for ease, I'm lining it up so you can see mm -hmm. that I've got it lined up with the edge. Okay. Perfect. So again, pin them working from the inside to the outside. I find if I put in the corners first, it stops it from moving. Um, you don't have so much of a problem with movement with these type of fabrics. It's when you get into the more slippery ones. Um, as I've even made masks in um, faux leopard fair for people. <laughs> it looked really nice actually. So again, just go through the same process. And cut around, take your time. Now, the one thing with interfacing is you can, if you want to go to the trouble, I don't, cut it just slightly smaller by um, a couple of millimetres if you want to. Now, I tend to use, normally I use sewing, sew-in interfacing. If you're not used to sewing, use the iron-on interfacing because you haven't got an extra layer to worry about slipping when you're cutting. So what you would do now is you would iron on this interface and I'm going to use it as so on, but I'm just going to show you what you would do. So take your pins out. Another tip as well, you should never put pins in your mouth. The reason being is they are full of bacteria and traditionally a seamstress would have rotten teeth because the bacteria from the pins would infect the gums and she'd lose the teeth. So don't, yeah. you know, full of those useful <laughs> bits of information. Now, when you go to put the iron on interfacing or in, you need to put the right side of the fabric down. So you've got the wrong side facing up. The smooth side, sorry, the bumpy side of the interfacing lay onto the wrong side, okay? And then if you've never done iron on interfacing before, put um, a tea towel, a cotton tea towel or a cotton, a piece of cotton over the top, mist it and then press with the iron. It's not, you don't iron, it's press, press, press. And I use the iron on steam for that. And that will just glue that on there. Then turn it over and just run the iron over the cotton side and it will be glued on and it won't move. Is that a little bit like Wonderweb, Louise? It is. Yeah. Um, is the a posher version? Is, yeah. yeah. Well, Wonderweb, because it bonds two fabrics, is actually a thin, is a layer of glue. Right. Um, 
So it's like, if you think of how a spider spins its web, if you think of that as really chaotic, that's wonder web and it's glue. Mm -hmm. This is um, a fabric, um, but it's more, it's, um, it's not a woven fabric. Okay. So felt isn't a, yeah. a woven fabric either. Yeah. Um, if you're a fellow mum, we've all <laughs> used Wonderweb <laughs> on school uniforms. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've, we've, we've all, all used, used Wonderweb at some time. But well, don't actually, try and do this. <laughs> don't try and do this with Wonderweb because if you put Wonderweb on here and then the tea towel on top, it will just fix it's the it. tea towel to the, yeah. to the mask. Yeah, good point. Thank you very much for that question. So I've got the layers together and I'm just going to right sides together with my interfacing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch the front curve there. Now I've already got some, in fact, I think I will use, so you can see it better because I'm using dark on the wrong side. Um, I'm going to use an orange gingham. In fact, just to show you another gingham, whilst I'm thinking about it. There you go, that's a different size check. Uh, smaller, isn't it? Gingham. Nice. Yeah, so a lot of the school uniforms are in this size. Um, smaller, yeah. 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 So, what so they, they need go to do now, that's for you. <laughs> That's for AD. There's different ginghams. <laughs> there is. Um, <laughs> a bit too stupid. So what I've got now, I'm going to go over to my sewing machine now. Has anyone got any questions on that so far? Now, if you are someone who's not used to sewing, pin this. Because sewing a curve, um, even if you've done a sewing machine and you've done quilting and you've You've, it's all been straight stitches so in a curve is slightly different again pin exactly the same as when you was pinning the paper pattern on so make sure everything is lined up and all the edges are together just take a moment or two to make sure that's okay and then pin the same again from the inside to the out so anchor the corners first And then because we're sewing, we're just going to sew this edge. Um, now you can put more pins in if you want to. Now, when you put your pins in, when you're going to sew, if you can see here, I've actually got a gap along this edge. And this is where I'm going to sew my seam allowance. And as I sew, I'll pull the pins out. Don't sew over your pins. Even if you have to stop the machine and take the pins out, then do that. I have a precautionary tale for you. Um, I know someone, and it was an overlocker, so it's slightly different, but um, I know someone who didn't and didn't take out of her pins, sewed out of it, the pin snapped and went in her eye. What? Right. Yes. Oh, right. But your, eye, your, your eyes don't actually have any nerves in them, so it didn't hurt. So you need safety um, goggles then for <laughs> or visor. Just take your pins out. It, as long as you take your pins out, you're fine. And wow. this is where you see people putting them in the mouth all the time as well. But if you think about it, so I have my pins in this tub here. Mm. Um, and my hands are in and out of it. They're, they're sort of like with pins, they tend to prick you and things. So if you think about the bacteria and things that are in yeah, there. Absolutely. Mm. It's, um, it's all worth it. So just on that note, before I go to the sewing machine, um, when you use these masks, um, one of the things that was pointed out to me um, that was really interesting is the fact that, yes, they are going to help you stop the spread in conjunction with hand washing and social distancing. Hand washing, I just wanted to say, is the best way to to remove the virus. Antibac gel is antibacterial gel. A bacteria and a virus are two different things. Therefore, antibacterial gel doesn't kill viruses. 
and it will may some of the stuff may kill viruses but you need to check that it's covid virus because not many of them i don't think any of them do so what i'm saying yeah. is i'm not saying don't use it it's better mm. than nothing mm. but washing mm. your hands following the hand washing where you take i think you have to sing happy birthday and that's how long you should wash them for yeah. um yeah. You can go onto the World Health Organization website, the NHS website, and there's lots of information on how to wash your hands properly. That is probably one of the best things you're going to do. And you need to do that before you take the mask, before you put the mask on and when you take it off. So enough of that. So I have got my sewing machine here. This is um, my old faithful. It's Aww. a Genomi, my style. Um, I've had this now nearly 20 years. And um, I bought this second hand as well. I do oh, have other sewing yeah. machines, um, quite a number of sewing machines. Let's not go into <laughs> the number right now. <laughs> wow. um, that's another show. That's another event, right? <laughs> oh, yes. And, and I have quite a few. I have embroidery machines, overlockers, and oh, these wow. lock machines wow. as well. So I have quite a few. Um, um, I, I think I'm nearly into uh, double figures now. Oh, wow. I know. So they say boys have their toys. That's your toys. There you go. Mine, yeah. This is your my baby. Precious your baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, with the sewing machine, if you've not used one before um, and you need a tutorial, you can always get in touch with me as well. I'll Perfect. do a Zoom tutorial with you. Um, now, this is a basic lock stitch machine that does zigzag and straight stitch. So I'm using a straight stitch and let me have a look. So the length is two and a half and the width is zero because it's a straight stitch. OK. Mm -hmm. Now I am using a poly cotton thread or you can use a cotton thread. Um, it's totally up to you what you would like to do. OK, before now, I've already set my machine up and checked the tension. Obviously, now I've said that it's all going to go pear shaped. But do that before you start sewing. Use a scrap of material just to check that everything's OK. Now, I start to sew from the point to the flat edge. I've just found that works out easier. And also the way that I pin with me being right handed, um, it works better for me that way as well. You pick up these things as you go. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is your seam allowance is, let me measure that, it is around about half a centimetre. Um, okay. Because I found if I used a larger seam allowance, it just, what happened is you had to trim it and cut it, and then I was trimming it too much, and then it uh, there was caused all sorts of problems. So from experience, it's about the width of the foot, so it's about a point. 0.5 or half a centimetre. I'm not quite sure what that is in old money, I'm mm. afraid. Can someone work that out in inches? I can, I can <laughs> do a half and a quarter of an inch, but once it gets down from that, I've had it, I'm if, afraid. If, if, somebody, if somebody can work that out, that'd be great. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I'll Google it. <laughs> so it's a case of just put it underneath, starting and drop the foot. Um, if you want to, if you're not used to your sewing machine, wind your needle down. If you are, it doesn't matter. And just do a couple of stitches and then you need to do a couple of reverse stitches. That just locks that stitch in place. Then taking your time. Now, when you use your hands, you need to make sure that even if your foot slips, you've got time to pull your hands away. Yeah. Um, I have stitched over my fingers. You don't want to do that. <gasps> no. Um, and just take your time feeding it through. There's no need to rush. If you need to adjust, then adjust it. I'll just show you how to do that. You can lift the foot to ease the tension slightly. But if you take your time and just gently sew along right to the end, follow the curve exactly. Mm -hmm. She said not taking the pins out. But fortunately, <laughs> I had them far enough away. So you can see I've done it in a dark enough thread so you can see it. It's not anywhere near my needles, that uh, pins. Mm -hmm. Okay. And once you get to the end, just stitch back and forward again and just stitch up. Okay. Trim your thread. Now, always trim your th threads as you go. There's nothing worse 
then I'm trying to trim them at the end of this. It just takes forever. Okay, so you can see that I've got. Oh, that's great. Yeah, nice neat line it's there. Smooth, it's smooth, and the stitch is just about the right size because you don't want it um, to have too big a gap, or you don't want it to pull the fabric apart. So I find a two and a half is absolutely fine. Um, and then just turn this inside out. Okay. Oh, perfect. So you can, if you want to, if you're a beginner sewer, press in between. It just makes life a lot easier. Um, I'm just going to, I've realized that I've made this a slightly different size to the one I've got cut out. So I'm going to trim around. So actually you can see the difference in the size here. So at the minute I'm making um, a mask for a seven to 13 year old. Okay. So if I pin this on here before I trim it, you can actually see there's quite a difference in size. That's the difference between um, an adult mask and a child's mask. It doesn't look like much, but once you've got that um, on the mask, it really does make such a difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to repeat the process with this mask. Obviously take your time doing this. And be better prepared. I find it's much easier if I have everything ready to go when you're going to do this and it works much quicker. So just take that out and I'm going to just sew this edge together. Now I'm not going to pin this because like I said, I've done quite a few of these now and just for time. Make sure all of your seams are the same size because otherwise it won't fit together. and trim off your excess threads. Now don't turn this one inside out because what you're going to do is you're going to put this, open it up and you're going to slide. So that's the right side of the fabric on the gingham and this is the right side. The two right sides go together. Okay, and just work them in so your seams match up. Mm -hmm. and the ends do. Now, if you, you haven't done this before, just press your finger, press your seams open. It just makes it easier. Pin. Honestly, don't, I know you've seen me do it without pins, but I've done a lot of these. Um, just pin it. It will make your life so much easier. And I double pin it on the seams. So where my two center seams meet, Show you that way, it might be easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can see that. Got great. double pins on there. Perfect. Then line up the ends. So everything lines up nicely and it will line up. It might take a little bit of shuffling because don't forget, you've taken a flat fabric and you're making it into a 3D shape. Mm -hmm. So it takes a bit of shuffling about. And Use, um, you, you don't have to use a matching thread until you top stitch, so you can use any thread. So you can see again, I'm pinning from the inside to the outside. Yeah, can see that. And make sure your center seams are aligned before you pin any other bit in the, because once you've got that bit sorted, it will all just fit nicely. And again, keep them away from the edge, just in case you're a ditz like me and forget to actually take your pin out. It's much easier to do that rather than to break the pin or the needle. Again, pin the corners. 
And if you're going to buy pins, buy decent pins, honestly. I, I bought a big batch from China uh, for teaching workshops and they were terrible. And they still come back to haunt me. I find the odd one still and it won't go through fabric. Okay, then do the same along the curves. If, you, if you're going to buy any of this thing, honestly, for me, um, as a living in Hull, I found boys is just fantastic. And also yeah. the staff there are so, so helpful. Um, they've been amazing. Even phone me up when the, a certain fabric's come in that I wanted so I could get there oh, um, and good. buy some. They, they, and um, the buyer gave me um, an installation I did last year. The buyer gave me loads and loads of fabric to create it because oh, I was nice. working with the community. So these were um, fabrics that would uh, were had seconds, so they weren't sale sellable. Rather than dispose of them, they gave them to me. So That's just brilliant. They are amazing. I can't say enough about the stuff there. They're brilliant when I go in. They should sponsor me. <laughs> they should. <laughs> And cheaper than Hobbycraft. Do you know what it really is? They're it is, it is cheaper. And you, and you can always find what you want, even if you can't find it. If you ask a member of staff, they'll find it for you. So you can see I've pinned this so it's not going to move at all when I sew it. That's quite important. So what you're going to do, you're going to sew just from here just from this very point here, because you need to have a gap to turn it. You've got to turn this the right way around. So if I actually draw on this, you'll be able to see it a bit better. Don't draw on yours. Um, I'm just doing this so you can actually see. So between the two pink marks, I'm not going to stitch that and I'm going to stitch all the way around the rest of the mask, okay? So I'm using the same stitch, same length. If anyone oh, has any questions so far, please feel free to put in the chat. Keep your fabric to the, the free side of the machine. You don't want the fabric under here. Um, it just makes it very difficult and awkward to sew if you do. And again, we're going to start with a, a couple of stitches and a couple of stitches back. When you come to the corner, drop the needle down 10, 90 degrees and drop the foot down, down again and then continue. Now take your time with this. If you take your pins out as you go as well, you don't have to take them at the end, which is always when you've done something and you want to get to the next stage. You don't want to be sat taking pins out forever, which yeah. doesn't isn't too bad on a project this size. But when you make something like a gown that's made out of um, seven metres of fabric and it's got a full skirt, it's a bit more challenging and you sometimes miss the pins. So we come into the corner, needle down, foot up, 10, 90 degrees. So you've got a sharp 90 degree corner. Now, when you come to the curve, take your time. Just remember, I've been sewing since I was 13, since I got double E in needlework. Now I'm that old, we did need the work. And that's what made me get into sewing. Aww. I got told I couldn't do it. <laughs> so I'll prove the teacher wrong. I oh, love it. Good for you. Oh, there was a lovely sweet irony as well, because I went home. Um, I got a pattern from boys, would you believe? Yeah. <laughs> some fabric I went to my nana and borrowed a sewing machine and made a skirt 
Oh. Then I went to school in my skirt. So I was 13. I went to school in the skirt I'd made. And I went into the sewing class and the sewing teacher said to me, oh, Louise, I do like your skirt. Where did you get it from? And I went, I made it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because someone had told me I couldn't do it. So don't ever think you can't do something because someone said you can. No such again, thing. Finish. Absolutely. Make sure you finish again with a back stitch. Okay, trim the fabric. Now, this next bit, if you want the sharp corners, is quite important. What you need to do, um, where the corners are here, you need to cut across on a diagonal, close to the stitching, but not through it. Um, and this will give you sharp points. And just... Now, with... And just take off the, uh, the, the pointy bits there, because otherwise you'll get bulk at the seam that you don't need. Now, a lot of people say cut into the curve. Now, with the seam allowance that I've said, you won't need to, okay? You just need to do the corners. And even if you don't want to do the corners, if you don't feel confident enough, it is not the end of the world. So this is where the magic happens. You're going to turn it inside out now. So pull it apart in the middle and taking the end that is stitched, you're going to just turn it inside out and push it through the opening, okay? Perfect. And just pull it through. Don't force it, it will come through in the end. Um, mm -hmm. But if you if you get too rough with it, you can tear the stitching. Particularly yeah, just the be end. gentle. Yeah. Gentle persuasion. Exactly. Tease and it then through. I, <laughs> I use a knitting needle just to push the seams out so you can see and then push gently into the corner so oh, you'll get the... mm -hmm. again gentle persuasion And then again, just running it across the seam. You can you can do this with your finger as well. Um, I've just got so used to doing these in a certain way. And then, particularly if you're new to sewing, so push it against each other like so. Press it. It will make your life so much easier if you press it. It's only because I've made so many that I don't need to. Now the edge here, this is the unstitched edge. You just need to fold that in and press it. Now I'm just finger pressing it because of time. And just push that corner out. Okay. Honestly, press it, it will make your life much easier. So you can see at the minute, we've actually got the mask. What okay. we need to do now is we need to create the casings for the elastic. Now the casings that are on this, you can use elastic, you can use shoelaces, you can use a bungee cord, it's up to you. I've created them so you can put anything through the casing. And also if you do use elastic and the elastic becomes um, soft and not, not elastic anymore, you can replace it. So, what we're going to do now is the, I'll show you the stitched edge first. You're going to fold it over like so. Now that is around about a centimetre. Okay, you don't need to do any more than that. You need it about that because you need to be able to get the elastic or the um, bungee or whatever you're using, the ribbon, whatever you want to use through that, okay? And you're going to do that on both ends and then you're going to top stitch. So the end, this is the end that's open. Again, repeat that. You don't need to stitch that bit yet and just fold it over so it's around about a centimetre. Centimetre, there you go. Yep, now, perfect. if you want to, if it helps, pin it just so you, whilst you're getting used to it. 
Now you're going to top stitch all the way along. This is why pressing it really does help. Mm -hmm. So you're going to, it's, so a top stitch, is that what someone's asking? A top stitch is a, is a row of stitching that's all the way, just along the edge here, all the way around it. It makes the, la the, the mask um, much stronger. It makes it last better and it holds the shape better. And it also creates the casing. Okay, now the top stitch is usually a slightly shorter stitch. So have it between the two and a two and a half. So, and I'm going to start, so you can see if I press that, this is why you should press it with an iron. You can see my fold line is just here. I'm going to start stitching just in front of the fold line. Okay. Now it doesn't matter because it's top stitching. Um, you can use a cont contrasting colour, you can use the same colour, just bear in mind you've got different coloured sides. You might want um, a different colour in your spool and in your bobbin. Okay. That's your bobbin. That's your spool. <laughs> I didn't think that was right when I said that. Um, or you might decide, like this is um, a ready orange, so I think it'll look good with all of it, and I'm just going to use that colour. Or if you've only got one colour, then just go for it. It doesn't matter. So just starting just in front of my fold there, and this is only about two or three millimetres from the edge, the stitching, okay? Take your time. No back stitching on this one. I'd just like to say everyone that if you want to refer back this is being recorded tonight so it will be available online um so obviously if you want to look back at this and see what the has done if you've missed anything you can always contact me if if there's anything that you see on the video that you've watched afterwards and you've still got questions about then pop yeah. over to Henry workshops face facebook page that's hey workshops and just drop yeah. me a message there and i'll get back to you perfect so continue sewing until you've come to the, can you see I've got the folded edge here and I'm going to stitch across that. Now take your time and this is where if you've pressed it, it makes it much easier because it makes the fabric thinner. Okay, and just take your time. If you find the folded edge is starting to curl up, stop the machine with the needle in the fabric, lift the foot and just gently ease the fabric underneath. Now you only want to just stitch into that uh, folded over fabric, because remember you're making a casing, you want the tube. So you're going to stitch along the edge here, okay? So you make that casing, you top stitch, and you stitch up the turning opening all in one go. I'm all for less is more. <laughs> and again, just follow the curve. And as you get in towards the end, fold over make sure that the raw steam is tucked in. Again, if it starts to curl up, just drop the needle down, lift the foot, push the fabric underneath, put the needle in, turn and straight down. And you will meet the seam where you started and then just stitch over it and two stitches back needle out, cut your threads. Now, because it's top stitching, try and cut them as near as the fabric as you can. Just keep it neater. You've actually got a mask. Hmm. So all Find you need to do, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just show you how to put the elastic in the casing. Um, now I use uh, around about 25 centimetres, uh, between 20 and 25, children's about 20. 
25 centimeters, which is around about nine to 10 inches. Um, so that means you can actually fix it to your face. Now I am using, um, this it's actually vintage, but it's an abraded, it's a braided elastic. So it's flat and around about two to three millimeters thick. This is the best elastic I've found, the most comfortable. It's better than round elastic and it's much better than the thicker elastic. Um, and it's also, it's a vintage one, so it's boil proof. If you want to know what this is actually for, it's, it's old fashioned knicker elastic. <laughs> <laughs> but it is fantastic and it so it lasts just the job it. it's yeah it's perfect for whatever purpose you need this it, it will <laughs> hold things in place so um I take around about a 25 centimeter piece and you're going to need one piece for each side now you can do this either with a um a bobkin dining needle or a crochet hook or a safety pin even um but I have these really nice plastic ones that um I think I've got from Amazon for some workshop that I was doing with children just simply thread it through like you'd be threaded it uh, and this this the iron this bodkin is so big even I can thread it <laughs> Yeah, did you not get that from boys you've just you've plugged boys and amazon <laughs> and you know is what this, I didn't. this this is this is an amazon special okay all right okay um, we'll amazon and boys <laughs> is, is everything to me uh without it i would i wouldn't survive exactly. just take the vodka in <laughs> and thread it through the casing that you've created and you can do this with ribbon string whatever you want and just pull it through perfect so you can see there You've got your elastic and then I'll just do the other one and I'll show you how to fit the mask. Fitting a mask is a really personal thing. So when I make these for people, I never tie the elastic because that's really up to you how you like it. Some people like it fitted very firmly against the skin and some people like it looser. So I usually just do now there's some naval officers here, so you'll be able to tell me what the heck not this is. I have a feeling it might be a reef knot, but I could be very wrong. Um, so I just tie it loosely and then over, over your ear. And it shouldn't be tight. So the central seam should be in the middle of your nose there and it shouldn't feel tight. That's a little bit too tight for me. And then I'll just loosen it off. Okay. Oh, perfect. And then I've got it round about where I want to here. Now, bearing in mind, this is a child's mask as well. <laughs> um, then try it on. Perfect. That fits comfortably. All you need to do now is just make sure that's tight. Trim off the excess if you want to, but you don't want to see the knot. Oops. just pull it through the casing oh, and then you haven't great. got them not irritating you either oh that's a good idea and that's how you make a mask now these can be washed at 60 degrees um i am still using the same masks i made back in march um the only reason i've made any new ones is because i, I tend to lose them um or I've got some new fabric because I've got the Batman fabric and I thought, well, it's Batman. It's Batman, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and it's even oh, wow. It's not just Batman, it's the Dark Knight. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's the only reason why I've made them. And do you know what? With this elastic, I've not had to replace any of it either as well. No. It's worked really well. So that's really how you make the masks. And don't forget, you can download the pattern from Hay Workshops um, on the Myth Busting video. It's in the comments there. But if you can't find it or you don't want to troll through all of that, just drop over to Hay Workshops Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, I mean, even on TikTok, um, and just say, can you send me the link to the mask? There's a great YouTube video on how to make it as well that the lady did it. I've changed it and customized it to fit what I think is better 
um, but the hair mask pattern is what I used. Um, and even if you aren't happy with the sizing, she'll give you a technique on how to make it. Um, if you haven't got a printer, she'll give you a technique on how to draw it out as well. So it's really, really great. And I would definitely recommend it. I tried lots and lots of different patterns and shapes of mask, and this is the absolute best. Oh, Louise, thank you for that. Very, very You're good. Welcome. If anybody wants to look over this video, it will be downloaded on YouTube. If you search for Green TV, the Pat Foundation. But before we let Louise go, I just want you to tell me and our viewers a little bit more about the other projects that you're involved in. Because you don't just make masks, do you, Louise? You do a lot of things in the community um, with children for the education. So tell us a bit more about the other projects that you do, please. Well, hey, work, as Hay Workshops and as an artist myself, I work with and volunteer with One Hull of a Forest yes. and the Pat Foundation. Um, and I do uh, time, what's it, hang on, let me think of the blurb that it, how it's been. <laughs> um, I do time limited, in, time sensitive installations of public art. So, and it's created collectively. So I, what that means is, um, I create pieces such as the whole poppy trail or the rainbow trees um, where we create um, pieces of work that you can make yourself or I make and it goes onto a net that is wrapped around a tree mm. um, and the rainbow trees was very much they were done in the summer and because of rainbows and pride and the NHS, mm. we created four trees covered in a rainbow of flowers to show about um, pride um, and our NHS. But the purpose is that people become aware of the environment and the trees. How often do you walk or drive past a road or a street with trees on and never see them? You don't value them. You don't understand what an impact they have on your environment. What happens is the trees then get chopped down and people go, what happened? We missed it. Exactly. So the idea of the installation is for you to see something again that you've missed seeing because you've grown numb to it. The installations are time sensitive because they're there for a period of time between two and three weeks when we find that people tend to stop noticing things again and then we take them away and people see the trees again so that's the idea behind those installations and they are a collaborative piece of art so the poppy trail um i had people um i had a retired fisherman who's 87 who oh. crocheted me 176 poppies. oh wow that's awesome well done him Oh. Uh, that was Peter, uh, Peter Burroughs, and he is a volunteer with Groundwork Hull, who is oh. um, the organisation who, one of them that actually bought nets and put some money into it, because obviously these things have to be funded somehow. Um, and the, I also had Newington Primary Academy, each pupil in the school in that primary academy made a poppy of one kind or another, yeah. um, either from um, the, the, the really young children made a group piece, group flower, uh, with lovely comments on it. They made them out of bottle bottoms where they painted them red and put a, a black bit in the middle, um, laminated ones. And I attached all of those and they made ba uh, bunting. And I covered four trees of that. In the poppy trail, there was 18 trees and two fences covered in poppies. There was around about, I would say, two and a half thousand poppies made. Um, so it, and obviously I can't do that myself. And that <laughs> was the community working together. And the, the, even when we was putting them up, the amount of people and the amount of veterans that actually came over and said thank you and said what it means we had people stopping in cars at the traffic lights to talk to us about it while we was Amazing. installing them so they have these installations have a massive impact on yeah. the community and you can engage in them in different ways so the next one is going to be the christmas trees trees brilliant yes, twice christmas and we've already been going to be we've got um an online so oh they're online. lovely so there's the better one. Oh, brilliant. Like um, it, they're lovely. Me, there's some, there's bunting as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, perfect. 
and oh. my little names as well. The um, name. Can't forget the names. <laughs> oh, they're, they're the two at the bottom there, they're, they're the naughty names. Oh, right. You'll, you'll, the, the you'll see more ones. of them, I tell you. But yeah. this is this installation. I've already got people posting these to me. So people are, oh. are creating art with me at home by making something and I'm putting it together. When we're not in lockdown, people actually come and put the wraps up with me. So there's okay. lots of opportunity. You can you can engage and create art on any level, whether it's at home, whether you follow a workshop tutorial that I've done, if you actually come and make it or put the installation up. Um, you can be part of a piece of art. So that is really it's brilliant. very much what Hay Workshops is about. No, it's brilliant. It's not only making something, creating something, appreciating the trees, which let's face it, in COVID, we've all appreciated our walks and nature and it's boosted mental health. But working with the Green Task Force alone, myself, wow, the, the difference and the impact. And it's bringing it the community together. Yeah, it's, it's an absolute amazing. fact, Gail, that... that um, and, and I did a piece of research for One Hull of a Forest that um, having worked with veterans that they actually said that that during lockdown access to yeah. green spaces, trees and woodlands exactly. is one thing that had a massive impact on their mental health, a positive. Exactly. Yeah, I'm impact. totally 100% agree. Well, I haven't got any questions in the forum, so I presume um, that's everybody's question answered. The demonstration was brilliant. Thank you, Louise. And like I said before, um, so look on YouTube to on the Pat Foundation the Thoughts of the Green TV. You can find the demonstration and also Louise and her workshops. The what was it called again? Hey, hey workshops. H E Y hey. workshops. There you go. So, um, so yeah, so absolutely enjoyed it. Really, really interesting. I actually want to go and um, <laughs> I, I've actually learned something and want to go and <laughs> go make a mask. Actually, I know my children would absolutely love that. So thank you very much. And if anybody's got any questions, get in contact with Louise. Thank you, everyone. I've really enjoyed it. Thanks ever so much. Bye bye. Guys, thanks for your time. Thanks, Louise. Bye. All right. Bye -bye. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.